Erica here with Prep Scholar GMAT. One of the most devastating mistakes test takers make on the sentence correction section is confusing one idiom for another. Today, we'll go over eight of the most common GMAT idiom mix-ups and how you can avoid them on test day. As always, if you like this video, you can hit the button to subscribe and feel free to head over to our blog for even more great GMAT content. Links are in the description. All right, mix-up number one such as versus like. In casual speech, many people use such as and like interchangeably before giving a list of examples. However, on the GMAT, only such as is used to introduce examples, while like is used to create a comparison. So, I enjoy vegetables such as broccoli and cauliflower means broccoli and cauliflower are two vegetables that I enjoy. While I enjoy vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, means I enjoy vegetables similar to broccoli and cauliflower. Two totally different meanings. Mix up number two, like versus as. We know from the last mix up that like is used for comparison. As is another word used for comparison. However, like is only used to compare nouns while as is used to compare verbs. So we would say cats like dogs sometimes play fetch because we are comparing nouns, cats, and dogs. But we would say cats sometimes play fetch as dogs do because we are comparing verbs play fetch and do. Mix up number three, due to versus because of. Like mix up number two, this is about nouns versus verbs. Due to only goes with nouns while because of only goes with verbs. So we would say my high GMAT score is due to careful study because due to modifies noun score. But we would say my GMAT score is high because of careful study because because of modifies is. Trick for this one, replace due to or because of with caused by. If it makes sense, we should use due to. If it doesn't, we should use because of. So my high GMAT score is caused by careful study makes sense. So we should use due to. On the other hand, my GMAT score is high caused by careful study doesn't make sense, so we should use because of. Mix up number four, whether versus if. Like such as and like, whether and if are often used interchangeably in conversation to introduce alternatives. I am not sure whether the oven is off and I am not sure if the oven is off mean the same thing to most people. However, only the first works on the GMAT. While whether is used to introduce alternatives, if is only used to indicate a conditional. I will turn the oven off if it is on. Me turning the oven off depends on the condition of the oven being on. So on the GMAT, the sentence, I am not sure if the oven is off, means that not being sure depends on the condition of the oven being off. So if the oven is off, then I am not sure. This doesn't make sense and would be wrong on the GMAT. Mix up number five, less versus fewer. This one you're more likely to have heard before, but it still catches students on the GMAT. Less and fewer both compare amount, but less compares uncountable nouns, while fewer compares countable nouns. So we say we have less clothing, but fewer clothing items. Less money, but fewer dollars. Mix up number six, more versus greater. This mix up is similar to the last. More is used for both countable and uncountable nouns. Greater is used for nouns that are numbers. So we have more clothing, more clothing items, but a greater number of clothing items. More money, more dollars, but a greater sum of money. Mix up number seven, among versus between. Another set of idioms related to amount. Among and between mean the same thing, but among applies to groups of three or more, while between applies to groups of two only. So if I had one brother, I would say my brother and I divided the cookies between ourselves. But since I have two brothers, I would instead say my brothers and I divided the cookies among ourselves. Mix up number eight, I and me versus myself. You might already know that I is always used as a subject while me is an object. I bought a movie ticket for my friend while my friend bought a movie ticket for me. But you may not know that myself is also used as an object, but only when referring to something you do to yourself. 
so I bought a movie ticket for myself. This rule is especially important because it applies to other sets of pronouns. She, her, herself, he, him, himself, they, them, themselves, etc. A lot of test takers fall for self pronouns because they sound fancy, but they are very often used incorrectly. And those are the eight most common idiom mix-ups on the GMAT. If you have any questions on what we talked about today or suggestions for future videos, please leave us a comment below. Thanks for watching and happy GMAT studies.